The British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, will fly to Brussels later today in a final push to secure a UK-EU trade deal when he sits down with EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. After months of talks, the EU's chief negotiator has warned the chances of a deal are now very slim. And time is running out. The UK will stop following EU trading rules on the 31st of December. Robin Owens tells us more. Can we afford no deal, Prime Minister? Boris Johnson is heading to Brussels in a final bid to break the impasse on a post-Brexit trade deal. The future of Britain's relationship with the rest of the EU hangs on the success of a dinner with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Yesterday saw some progress when the UK agreed to drop plans to override sections of the withdrawal agreement, which would have potentially broken international law. The move means Northern Ireland is kept more closely aligned to the EU than the rest of the UK. Our objective uh, has been uh, clear all along, to protect the Good Friday Belfast Agreement, maintain peace, stability and prosperity on the island of Ireland and preserve the integrity of the EU's single market. This is just one jigsaw piece in a much wider agreement and concern about a no deal is growing. Major disagreements remain on fishing rights, business competition rules and how a deal will be policed. I think that um, our, our, our friends have, have just got to understand that uh, the UK has left the European Union in order uh, to be able to exercise democratic control over, over the way we do things. An agreement has to be reached and ratified by the end of the year. Otherwise, the UK and EU will be imposing tariffs on each other's goods. Robin Owens, Euronews. Well, let's go to Brussels to get the very latest. Our correspondent Shona Murray is there. Shona, just tell us then, has ever, ever there been a dinner date with so much riding on it? No, I don't think so, Rosie. And I know that we've said it many, many times before, but this really is make or break for uh, the Brexit negotiations on the future relationship. And um, we will hear, I suppose, at the end of tonight uh, how that goes. But for now, I'm joined here in the European Parliament by Philippe Lambert, who's leader of the Greens group here and also on the Brexit Steering Committee. Uh, Philippe. A lot of people say that when they heard that Boris Johnson was coming to Brussels, that that meant he definitely wants a deal and a deal was in the offing. Would you agree with that statement? Well, it, it's one of two things. Uh, either he wants to give the appearance that he's went the extra mile and that it is finally impossible to make a deal with these bloody Europeans. That's one option. The other is that uh, he still wants a deal and uh, he's prepared now to uh, make the necessary concessions in order to make it possible. What do you think um, the EU can move on in relation to, for example, level playing field in the area of subsidies? The EU wants, of course, to ensure that there is a UK independent body that decides when subsidies can apply and that there's a governing element of that so that businesses and industries across Europe uh, can have their disputes heard. Do you think that's something that the UK can agree to or that the EU well, can Well, it's for on? the UK to decide. But uh, what we want is to avoid unfair competition, basically. So it has to do with state aid. It has to do with undercutting EU regulation or UK regulation, for that matter, because in some areas the UK may be more ambitious than the European Union. So what we want is a mechanism that protects uh, both parties from unfair competition. That is, that indeed we need to have regulatory convergence between the two, and if we can't, then we need the unilateral ability of either party to restrict market access if it deems that the other is uh, actually uh, uh, competing in an unfair way. So I think this is sensible, actually, mm. and it can create a good precedent for other trade deals, actually. And the other thing is you hear a lot about uh, dynamic alignment and that the EU wanted the UK to follow its rules. But, of course, that isn't the case. It's really that, that the UK doesn't reduce its standards, just to be clear about that. Yeah, indeed. So what we want is a non-regression clause, that at least we are not weakening current standards to which both parties adhere. Since, we, since uh, uh, so far, the UK is uh, uh, applying EU legislation. What we want is in the future that indeed uh, no party tries to undercut uh, the other's legislation and thereby gain unfair 
uh, competitive advantage. Of course, seen from the EU, it is, prime, it, it is targeted at, at the UK, and for a reason, because the, we have had uh, a number of UK politicians saying that, that well, well, the, the UK, UK should transform, transform itself into a Singapore on Thames, where mm. they will basically undercut all legislation. I'm not saying that all the U, uh, UK politicians want to go that way, and maybe for Boris Johnson it will be impossible if he wants to retain the red wall constituencies that allowed him to win the election. But, well, well, better, better safe than sorry, and, and therefore we want guarantees. We want guarantees that they won't do that. And, well, the less guarantees they can give us, the stronger the retaliation mechanism mm. has to be. Because we, we need to be able to close our markets if we see that they are threatened by unfair competition. It is about preserving what we call the integrity of the single market, but to, to be very clear, the possibility for all companies to do business. Uh, because at the moment, we, yes, we have a surplus with the UK, but if the UK transforms itself, uh, gaining full market access and then transforming itself into a place of social dumping, environmental dumping, and all the rest of it, then we are potentially introducing a lethal threat to all businesses, and this we won't do. Just very briefly, uh, you were very pessimistic earlier in the week after listening to Michel Barnier. Do you think there's any hope in the last couple of days that there's been any progress? Do you hope that we could see something materialise that's positive in terms of the future relationship? I would say Boris Johnson is the ultimate opportunist. If he feels it opportune uh, uh, for his political career, because that's the only thing that counts for him, uh, to, uh, uh, to sign a deal, he will. But of course, there will be a political cost. The problem is that Boris Johnson has promised and, and said literally, we can have our cake and eat it. Today, he will need to say, well, we either have our cake or we eat it. And so he is bound to disappoint people. Because, well, having our cake and eat it is not on offer. Philippe Lambert, leader of the Green Group here at the European Parliament, thank you very much for joining us. And back to you in the studio, Rosie. Shona, thank you very much. Our correspondent there in Brussels.